For all things outdoors, listen to the father of two, the Jesus-loving TV show hosting Harry, True Blood American Redneck, Ben Cole. And listen to the outdoor filming, chef cooking, chocolate milk drinking, John Weismuller. And we are Rooted Podcast. Do the verse. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Rooted Podcast. This episode is going to be filled with a lot of deer stories as deer season is in full swing here in Tennessee. Don't worry, we got a ton of fun, exciting things coming your way. But as always, Ben, start us off right here. All right, guys. We are in Psalms 51, 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Now, John, I can sit here and relate to this 10 million times in my life because there for a long time, I was a lukewarm Christian, which is hard for me to say because it hurts, Uh, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, wavering all the time, letting the devil pull me away from God and then running back to God all the time, back and forth, back and forth. So I have been here. I have been this right here i have said this a million times and i just want y'all to know that god will never forsake you he will never leave you behind even though you run away you try to do your own thing he's not going to let you fail and he's going to you know be there he's going to be there with open arms Mm -hmm. when you come back like you know the the father and the wayward son i am the wayward son I have been the wayward son so many times, man. And dude, this is just a beautiful thing right here that it talks about in Psalms. And I love it. I have talked about it in my own life, in my own prayers. And man, it just it just hit me hard this morning. Hey, I totally get it. You know, whenever something connects with you, it just connects. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So, you know, me and you recently went down to the ranch, the Sinking Creek Ranch down in Linden, Tennessee. And folks, today we're going to kind of tell you what we experienced there during our couple day hunt. Now, granted, we were not able to get up to the top of the mountain because me being a goof forgot the side by side. Go figure. It's like, how do you forget That's the side by side? How do you, how do you forget a side by side? Well, I don't know. You start driving down the road and get halfway there and you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> no, whoops. Well, well, folks, I forgot the side by side. So here we are. And me and John were like, oh, shoot. What are we going to do now? I was like, well, I guess we're going to hunt the valley that we can get to in the F-50. Yeah. I reckon that's what we're going to do. So, John, let's uh, let's dive in and talk about our yeah. hunt there and, and what what fun we had watching them turkeys and all that good stuff my goodness yeah so well you know i get off of work friday evening we we were on the camp per usual you know about around 11 <laughs> get up the next morning and uh you know for the first sit we're sitting over uh this beautiful uh was that it was daycon radish and maybe some clover in there mm-hmm yep daycon radish is half of it so it's daikon radish turnips and chicory in one half and the other half is sporadic radishes with peas oats wheat triticale and clover so we were hunting over that beauty of of a plot there and i mean dude it just looked like we were you know in a magazine and uh but the only thing missing was the deer so we did not see a deer on that sit, but we did have a bunch of turkeys fly in, and that was, oh my gosh, dude! I just, I don't care what time of year it is. When you watch three long beards fly into a field, it's it's something of beauty right there. And uh, we did capture some of it on film, so uh, <clears throat> that that was super cool as well. But that that was kind of the first morning, and then you know we uh, go back make a game plan you know we, i think we checked some cameras we you know we did a couple things and then then it was time for the evening hunt and we go to a different food plot that's uh <clears throat> dude i mean th- you, this you talk about picture perfect so 
in this field, and Ben could probably portray this better better than I, but I will try here. There's there's this field, and that's in, in between two patches of woods, and he has wrapped it with corn, and then in the middle is is, is some sort of like a, I mean, it, it's a weed, it's a something. What has it been? So this is the field of dreams and you've heard me talk about it before, but it is my favorite spot to hunt because it is a it's major awesome. travel corridor for deer of all kinds, bucks, does, fawns, everything. What you have is in front of you when you're sitting in the shooting house, you have two ridges that meet and there's two logging roads that come down. So there is a pinch point right there. And there's also another logging road that goes right and left from those two that come down so <clears throat> these deer are traveling long way down these logging roads to come into this field but now they can also go across the small creek behind us and travel up the next thicket i, I leave that kind of <clears throat> grown up so that we don't have too much you know browse and too much food all in one particular area i try to space it out a little bit so i've left that field open and just let it kind of grow up, get thick, so those bucks feel safe coming in and out of there. It's more of a staging area is what I would like to call it. And just at the edge of that, there's another logging road that goes right up the ridge. So <clears throat> you essentially have these this funnel that goes right through the middle of this field. And I wrap the field in corn. And by the way, they have decimated the corn. It's still standing they have destroyed it. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, it was so much fun to sit there and watch those deer eat the corn. But <clears throat> so a lot of times they'll come down either off that ridge in front of you or they're going to come to your left about 150 yards down and either walk the road that goes to the shooting house or they're going to cut through the corn there on the corner and wrap around the edge of the field and take the main road up and into the corn. You know. That's just kind of their travel patterns. But uh, inside the corn, I have oats, triticale, and let's see, what else do I have in there? I have some uh, wheat and maybe a little bit of clover. I can't, I don't think I had a lot of clover left in that patch. Uh, by then, it was, it was pretty well used up, but I think there's some still it, there. But it grew up amazing. Oh, man. There's something about that soil in that particular field man i didn't even have to put out a whole lot of fertilizer for the corn because it was so fertile and you know that just goes back to to show you when you pull your soil samples when you know what you're getting into you know that ten dollar soil sample saved me about a thousand dollars on fertilizer so mm -hmm. you have to you have to think about it like that yes it does take you some time sure yes it does cost ten dollars and it takes about two weeks to get it back but two weeks and 10 bucks that's well worth it to me yeah. to save a thousand dollars on fertilizer when you know exactly how much you need to put out exactly per acre and then you you know what i do after that is i go in and i map the spot that i'm going to plant in corn and then guess what you know exactly how many acres you got so you don't have to waste <laughs> a bunch of fertilizer and put too much out and then it burns up your corn or food plot or whatever you don't mm -hmm. want too much nitrogen on any plot i say all that to say that with all these steps that we've done it has made a beautiful sanctuary for these deer to go and come as they please now when rifle season gets here i promise you one thing john i will be bush hogging mm -hmm. corn to the right and to the left so that way i can see all the way down that 6.5 prc is going to bark and so is oh, yeah. the, uh, so is that beautiful fifty caliber muzzleloader. I'm telling you right now, John. If those bucks do Ooh. what they did opening weekend of bow season, they are in trouble. Come November the ninth, they are in major trouble, big time. Oh, it's buddy, not, it's, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it's not going to be good for them because I'm going to go click boom. Let that Dude, old smoke even, roll, baby. Yeah exactly even that little well i say little i mean it was little on on that ranch but that little buck buck that we saw i mean yeah. that was the uh last was that the last morning 
Yes, it was. I believe it was. Yeah. And uh yeah, yeah, we ended up seeing a doe and then and then that buck came out. And that's the beauty of having your field wrapped in something tall like a corn, you know, or you could do like an Egyptian wheat. I've seen sunflowers, anything that grows tall or just leave tall grass, which is whatever your preference. Yeah. And <clears throat> something about having a cover and then having a, a funnel. So, you know, whenever we have these overgrown fields that, that Ben's talking, one great thing to do is to just go in there with your brush hog and cut one single path. If you can find a deer trail already and just cut that path, uh, ideally right to your tree stand, basically, and kind of curve it that, that way the deer walks broadside. Mm. And dude, deer they're just like anything else man they're gonna try to take the path of least resistance and if you just so happen to make that path a little easier for them to walk they're gonna walk it Mm -hmm. and then they're gonna feel safe because there's cover and there's an easy path that's like heaven to them and if it's leading to food that's also covered oh buddy you're in oh you are in so that's one of the reasons that this this buck we saw on the last morning came out because he was in cover. He was fine. He walked down a, a path that was already there. He went into cover. We saw him. Uh, we couldn't have shot him with the bow, even if we wanted to. Um, but but to your point of come rifle or muzzleloader season, mm-hmm. it's game on, buddy. These deer got no idea what's going to do. Because let me tell you something, that bullet can rip through a couple years of corn and still be just fine. Oh, yeah. Well, here's another <laughs> point that I'm going to add to that. You know, you're talking about with the field being wrapped and all that, and they feel safe because they got cover. Another point to note on that, you're exactly right about that, but uh, another point to note is that a buck is going to come into that cover and into the field to check for does because if he can't see into that food plot, he's coming into the food plot to look for does. Mm-hmm. That is what he's doing. So ideally you want to make these areas like little pockets of food plots and then have your shooting house in the middle so you can see both sides you know and see everything that's going on around you but he can't so he has to go from one to the next to the next to the next which ultimately is going to aid in your success in the long run because he's going to be out there longer looking for those in those areas so i would highly suggest wrapping your field for what John's saying and for the points that I'm bringing to you, that is one of the main reasons that I do it, not only for cover, but it's also food too. So you got to think about that. It's just um, an extra extra food source. It's cover. It makes those bucks feel safe. They can come out, they can eat, they can look in the field to see what is out there. And who knows, they may come within bow range. You can't ever tell about a wild animal. No, for sure. Cause you know, and the other thing is, like my 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 old family farm we don't we sold it but um it was so big i i literally at the time i mean at the time i was i just i was uh, 16 17 whatever and like i literally just couldn't afford all all the seed so i couldn't plant it all of course and so you know and then all this stuff would be would just be tall grass and the first like season or two i just mowed it you know, you know well bush hogged it and uh then i started learning about all this i'm like i'm like why aren't these deer just coming to this food plot like i had i maybe made like an acre of it into clover Mm -hmm. and i had some deer in there but nothing that i really was just like come on until Mm -hmm. it was nighttime you know after i left and it was you know nine ten o'clock at night and these big big deer are strolling in here and then i learned about all this cover stuff so you know, my kind of point is, is you don't have to wrap it if 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 you can't do it. Like, yeah. just let nature take over and do it. And that's that's what I did. And I cut those paths. And then, you know, obviously, man, if you can wrap it in corn, buddy, those deer, yeah. golly bum, that that all these bucks that we've seen there, they are eating that corn, golly mm-hmm. bum, they're tearing it up. Oh, but you know, man, if you can have cover and then a path that goes to that food source, you're gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the truth, man. And, you know, in fact, I even did that on our quail habitat this year. I ran out of time to plant everything that I needed to plant. So I just went in and let it grow up, let the natural native grass grow. And buddy, it's about waist high. And I just went in and bush hog strips through it. 
and I'm going to go back in a, a week or two and bush hog my cross lane so that way we can put water buckets at the end for the dogs. But, man, it was yep. free. I mean, that's all free. That's God's plants that he put right there in that soil, buddy. And it's called the seed bank. There's, there's a bank of seed in the soil that just naturally grows. So that's what we have in that field. And let me tell you something. It works phenomenally. It is outstanding cover for those little quail birds. They're probably never going to live. But you know what? It's going to be a dang fun time doing it. So I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that. So we may have to do a little test hunt here before long, old Johnny boy. Let this, mm-hmm. let this, mm-hmm. Don't you don't you tempt me with a good let, time. Let this weather get cooler so them dogs don't get so hot and we'll dive on off in there and we'll have to make some fried quail with white rice and brown gravy. Ooh, 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 what you mm. talking about? That is some fine pickings mm. right there. If you never had it, go get it. Try it. It's worth every second. But to turn us back to where we started on our hunt, um, you know, we're getting into mid-October here. And, buddy, I'm telling you right now, this weather is something amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, it was hot when we were in the stand. It was hot. It was 85 degrees, to be exact. And this week, the the highest I've seen is 74. And I was like, oh, oh, buddy. And the low, guess what the low is, John? A cool 36 degrees on Wednesday. And I'm like, oh, oh buddy. Mm. Mm. And you know what's funny is that's the coldest that I remember in mid-October in this state. And <clears throat> I'll be honest mm-hmm. with you, I think we're going to have earlier rut activity and here's why I think that it's because I have noticed a bunch of scrapes already, John. I mean, a pile of them. I noticed one on our home farm yesterday that I usually don't get any scrapes on that road until mid November. And there were two of them Uh-oh. side by side under the same Lincoln branch right there, right side by side with a little bit of leaves dividing them. And I thought, Oh crap, this is, this is getting real. Because every year, I've got a camera over there, man, and a food plot. So it's right off the edge of the food plot. And every year, you can mark your calendar by it. Mid-November, they're on fire over there. Well, this year, mid-October, they're on fire over there. So, I mean, I had, I'm had i still getting pictures as we speak from the Wise Eye cameras in the Hunt Wise app. Hunt Wise app. <laughs> well, we use Hunt Wise, too. <laughs> I actually mapped off that food plot in the hunt wise app just so you know but the game cameras are hunt wise i get a little brain confused there a little bit i know i know it's a lot you got hunt wise wise eye and then and then the hunt control yeah there's just a lot going on right there yeah so man i've been watching that hunt control all morning buddy and because of course my camera battery died of course it did right when they start sure I'm like, oh, fantastic. That's what I wanted was from a dang camera battery to die. But nonetheless, man, I can't believe that we have scrapes this early. And mm, it's crazy, really. It, it is, man. And I've had this year on this farm, I have some of the most mature bucks I have ever had. And one of them looks like he's got a big old basketball belly. I mean, it just sags, man. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. You know, he ain't going to score a lot. He's a solid eight point. But, buddy, I'm telling you right now, if he gives me an opportunity, we're going to let an arrow fly or some lead scream, one of the two. Yep, whichever happens first. I'm right there with you, dude. You know, this this cold front that's coming in here that you're talking about, it's going to be a game changer. This thing, Mm -hmm. I have rarely, I don't think I've, maybe one other time I've seen this early of a cold front you know like we're 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 towards yes we're in the middle of october but towards the 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 beginning of the middle if that kind of makes sense you know we're we're in the 13th 14th not the 18th or 19th you know so Mm -hmm. so we're on we're on the we're on the very beginning of the middle of october here this cold front's coming down and dude it feels amazing number one and these deer are loving it man i was watching my cameras as well this morning um I didn't miss anything too too fascinating during legal hours, but 
uh probably like an hour before shooting light i had uh my big eight on camera and i was like oh buddy so the last time he was on camera at night he came in in the evening so we're going to try to recreate that scene and make that happen this evening because buddy if you can find you an october cold front odds are pretty good and so i am i am really excited about that uh it's actually going to be i'm i'm going to be sitting in the same blind over the same field that just a, uh, about a week ago now maybe five days ago uh my dad got 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 his first deer of the season so that that was really incredible i'm i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna deep dive into that if if y'all if y'all will let me here for just a second i know yeah, i start go. to ramble on and i get to go uh, tell us so a story about your pal shooting a deer buddy so look first thing you got to realize about my dad is he don't give a crap, crap. about crap i'm <laughs> just telling you right now he don't care and he i mean so and now granted here's here's the reason this is a little backstory so about a year or so ago my dad um he he had a stroke in in his in his eye and he went blind in his right eye okay and he's right eye dominant right handed you know his whole life so now okay he can't shoot a he he can't shoot a compound bow uh he, he i mean he physically can't pull it back let alone shoot it that way so i was like okay we'll get you a crossbow so okay right got a crossbow and now that's a little easier to to shoot left-handed and so we we practice and he's shooting good and like, all right great so now at this point he's like i'm just thankful i can even do this mm-hmm. so he said john the first deer that comes out i'm shooting it i was like hey all right man whatever dude i it. said well i know the place to go so come on mm-hmm. and uh so we hop in this blind and sure enough around around 5 30 or so uh deer deer start piling in and there's five deer in, in the field here uh i think there's uh three three like big big does and two babies so um so anyway this uh doe comes about 40 yards broadside and he's like i think i can actually see that one really good because he was having kind of some trouble seeing and i was like hey dude don't don't shoot unless unless you're comfy i said these deer they're gonna be in here for an hour hour and a half just take all the time you need he's like i've been watching them for weeks i promise it'll be fine and one finally just stands there and is eating this day conrad is just chewing away and uh for a blind non-dominant hand and shot dude he's freaking smoked that thing dang he's he's uh shooting these uh they're not even like i don't even know if they're really i forget the brand but just a regular uh fixed blade mm-hmm. and dude he, he 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 so i'm watching it through through the binos and he shoots and the deer you know kind of ducks a little and i was like man I, I think you hit that deer just a little low and stuff he's like and the whole time, dude, he's like, I smoked it. I smoked it. I know I freaking did. I smoked that deer. I was <laughs> like, all right, all right, man. Well, let's just let's just wait here for a minute. Let's get all of our stuff out of the blind. You know, let's go try to find the bolt and all that. And, uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, we get out there. Dude, there's no blood. Can't find the bolt. Like, oh, no. I believe, you know, I don't know if it was just not a good hit or he missed. Like, I'm not really sure yet. But he's telling me through this whole time of us looking for blood and everything, he's like, "I smoked that deer." I'm like, "All right, man. Hey, if 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 if, if you're comp, if you are if you are that confident, mm-hmm. then let's just just go look." So I just I'm like, okay, if there's no blood, I need to look for some sort of path that this deer may may have run. And what I mean by that is, you can really see where a, anybody like. If you, you know, walked in your living room and started falling down and pushing stuff out of the way to get somewhere, you would know. Mm -hmm. It's the same way here. Like, you're like, oh, this, this looks, this looks different. I just start following and I'm just beep bopping. Dude, sure enough, dude, like 40 yards in the woods, there's this doe piled up. I'm like, I'll be, and he freaking smoked that thing. And I think it just happened so fast. I mean, it was a complete pass through. Mm -hmm. Um, And I mean, it just didn't even really have time to bleed. I don't think. Yeah. It just was was done. We ended up finding the bolt. I mean, and it. I mean, dude, it was perfect. 
it was just like holy crap he just smoked and it had the perfect you know like kind of triangle look thing you know where it punched through the deer so i mean it, it it was just awesome you know you go from maybe not able to hunt ever again because you know you're blind in your dominant eye and you got to retrain your body at you know what's he now he's uh, I think he's he's 59 now. Oh, so, wow. I mean, you know, I mean, whenever you're at that point in your life and you have to retrain everything, that's a big, big task. And, uh, yeah. but, but he did it. He smoked that deer and, uh, he processed it all, all, all himself. And, uh, man, he's just, he, he just crushed it. So that, it, you know, it's always special, right? Whenever you're out with your family and you're in God's creation and you're mm-hmm. in, and you're deer hunting, and then let alone you actually get one and a plan comes together. And we had yeah. built that platform that the blind was on. We had mm-hmm. uh, both of us had built this food plot, you know, and then yeah. and then of course everything that happened. And then he gets to, you know, tag a deer. That was that was really really awesome. So yeah. Um, man it's it's just super you know and you just really have to enjoy every moment man because you just never know i mean he just uh went to bed one night and his eye was a little cloudy and and, you know he has diabetes he's like i probably just my sugar's too high or too low or whatever and uh then he wakes up and he's blind it's like so you just dude you just you just never know man so you just got to take every single moment you know and uh cherish it and uh you know so my point is with saying that is if you can get out and go just go yep especially if you can go with your daddy your relatives or uncles yeah exactly anybody yeah, man, man your best friend best friends whatever just go just go sit in the woods and enjoy your time and god's creation man because you know i just got back from arkansas and we'll talk about on the about that on the next episode there uh, about brushing duck blinds Mm -hmm. and getting ready for duck season so but the point of saying that is that i brought back 50 quarts worth of deer burger and steak and back straps Mm. oh yeah dude i had 20 pounds of burger meat off that buck 20 pounds 21 pound packages from that buck Mm. and that's not counting the backstrap that's not counting the steaks that came with it that's not counting the cube steak and all that stuff that's just the burger meat alone so Heck yeah. let me tell you something i'm real proud to have cube steak and burger meat and backstraps at my house and we will consume mm-hmm. that deer here soon uh, we're gonna segue and that's what your boy is about to start cooking is deer meat because i've been taking note of all your cooking while we've been together and uh yeah, oh, yeah. you've been teaching me whether you knew it or not i was listening i was paying attention <laughs> to everything and then i sat there and edited both those videos for about three hours so it's kind of ingrained in my head yep. now so you know we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna cook and eat on this deer and you know what's great about this is that i know 110 percent for a fact that this buck is pure and awesome and there's no substances in this deer it's all You're right clean, yeah man there's no additives and no you know red 33 and yellow 57 yeah, exactly. know, or whatever the else yeah. crap is in our no, food today we don't have any of that man it's pure beautiful meat sent to us from god himself so yeah 100 percent venison Oh yeah, one hundred percent natural, ready to go. Now look, I gotta tell you another story here. Oh, go ahead. So look, you want to talk about one hundred percent natural? So, my wife, <clears throat> uh, last year, was fortunate enough to watch me uh, shoot this buck mm-hmm. um, at a out of the field here. So, mm-hmm. um. She knew I was going to get it mounted, you know. So yeah. around this time of year, everyone's talking about deer hunting and cold fronts, and right? And that's what we're talking about. But mm-hmm. what sometimes we fail to mention is this is also usually the time of year that 
your bucks from last year already at the taxidermist. Yeah. Rough and tough. Yeah. So, sure enough, I get the phone call from my good buddy, John Luke. He says, hey, buddy, man, we got your deer ready. And I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. So my (laughs) so anyway, I get the buck, dude. It looks freaking awesome, man. Gosh, dang, it looks great. Monster buck. And I'm like over the moon about it. And then, you know, I bring it home and I put it on the wall, you know, and the whole family comes over for dinner and they're all looking at it. And they have never had a deer mount in their house before. Like, mm-hmm. like, whoa, this is this is new territory for them. And mm-hmm. and you know, new territory for my wife as well. And you know, I, whenever I got with her, I was explaining to her the whole idea of hunting and how it provides and yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the coolest moments. She was looking at the deer and was like, You shot that thing here and then it fed us. And then now it's here on the wall. Mm. I said, well, and it's here on the wall. That way we can never forget. And also that way we could, you know, we could always cherish that moment and also just kind of remember like, Hey, you know, this, this dude fed us, this dude gave us a great memory together. I don't want to forget it. And I want to preserve that memory forever. And it was really cool to watch her just kind of connect the dots there. And everything kind of came full circle. So you talk about 100% natural. That's why it's so important to involve everybody in it for me. Because then they get to see the whole, the whole you know, moment there kind of come full circle. And, and it all comes together. And, uh, and it, it was just really awesome kind of watching my wife connect the dots and being like, oh, this is, this is awesome. Yeah. So thankfully she let me put it up in the living room. What? It's there now. It's awesome. Yep. This yeah. uh turkey's coming right up next to it. I done got the go ahead for that. So Well good, because I, I was it. gonna say when I come up to shoot some does with you, we were just gonna send her on her way to town and me and you were gonna put it up in there right <laughs> before I leave. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and and my wife is Get him in there. Just the opposite. She's like, Hey, when are you bring that taxidermy home? You know, and her mama yeah, exactly. is like, hey, you going to kill me some deer to put on my wall this year? I was like, how about we do this? <laughs> we can cycle out the deer that I've already got to your house and put the new ones in my office. Yeah. Like that. That's what we'll do. Yeah, right exactly. Because I've got yeah, plenty see of them here in my office. I think there's like 16 of them here in the office. You know, some are like that, just skull. Actually, a lot of them are skull caps, but there's also several shoulder mounts, and I got to, you know, make some room in here for this season because, as you know, the velvet buck, it'll be here about September of next year. And y'all, I'm going to Texas next weekend Uh -uh. for six days. Mm. Yeah. Just know we're going to Texas. Not telling Fixing you. To get nasty. I ain't going to tell you with who. I ain't going to tell you where. We're going to Texas, and we're going to have a ball. And with some great brothers of mine, they're awesome individuals. Uh, I mean, just great, great humans. And they just ask to be anonymous. And that's where we're going to keep it, is anonymous. There you go. So... But just know but if it's you're gonna listening, be fun. if you guys are listening, just know that your boy appreciates you from the chest, from the heart. There, uh, y'all are great dudes and greatly, greatly appreciate you. Yeah, Ben's <laughs> Ben's gonna come back with a with a giant from Texas. If I had to guess, I hope so. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. A whole lot of fun. I'd love That'd it. Be real great. I'd be excited. Get out of here. Who knows? I may get a wild hair. Oh, all day long. Bro. Try to find me somewhere to shoot a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dude, Texas is a wild place, man. Yeah, oh, my God. It is. Actually, if I was going to shoot anything else other than a buck, it would be an Axis deer again or a, um, oh, what's the name of that? A, I can see it now. Um, you know what I'm talking about. It's the Asian antelope, that big old rascal. Uh, it's like 1,200 pounds. They got them at the King Ranch. Oh, then. Neil guy? Yes, the Neil guy. That's it. I want to kill a Neil guy because now they have escaped all these high fences and stuff like that, and they have created 
a free range population. So, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, is right. It's like the axis deer that my mother in law stole them out. Actually, I I let her have it. <laughs> um, but it's at her house anyway. That was free range. It was awesome. Um, so cool. Yeah. Shot that rascal and thought I I just I, I literally watched him jump the fence to the neighbor's farm and my heart sank into my stomach and I thought no. Mm-hmm. Luckily though, the guy that was working there was like, "Oh yeah, I know them. You're good." I was like, "Oh," and there was actually a gate at the back side of the farm that we could just scoot right over there and grab him. So I was like, "Well, that's fantastic. That's nice." So, uh, but yeah, man, the old six five PRC is going to work this weekend. I killed that one with a three hundred window mag. If you don't know what a window mag is, it's a three hundred wind mag, but it goes out the window of my shooting house every time. That's why I call it the window man. <laughs> and there you go. Because <laughs> it's too heavy to carry around in the mountains. So you have to go sit somewhere. That's why it's called the window That's man. exactly right. Yes. There yes, you go. Sorry. Absolutely. Well, John, if you got if you don't have anything else, I'll close her out here. But um you got anything? Nope. Man. All right. No, man, I think I'm good, you know. I just wanted to tell the story there about my mount, but uh yeah. Other than that, brother, I just hope everyone has a uh, fantastic season. Watch out for that October cold front as mm-hmm. it's coming. Be in the woods. Love God. Love the woods and love your neighbors. Just remember that. Always love your neighbors and be good stewards of what God has given us, which is these critters, the lands, everything. Be good stewards. For that, we're going to wrap this baby up. Remember, you can go to our website, rootedtelevision.com for all the swag for Rooted Podcast and Rooted Television. And if you're feeling generous and want to donate some cash to this thing to work, head over to this episode, and there's actually a link in the description. In fact, there's a link to the this particular thing in every single description of every episode. We would greatly appreciate it. We want to keep doing this. So any and all support is very helpful. Thank you guys so much. The Redneck is out. See y'all. Boom. For all things Rooted Podcast and Rooted Television, and I mean hats, shirts, hoodies, and other merch, check out our friends at CH Lone Star Pro and the link that is in our description.